welcome in the name of Jesus the Savior, who died and was raised to new life by the grace of God. We are gathered here to worship, to remember before God our brother Glenn Groth, to give thanks for his life, to commend him to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. Let us pray. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first hymn is the hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. If you would like to use a hymn book, it's number 733, but the words will be on the screen as well. We're going to sing verses 1 and 3. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our brother Glenn Groth. We thank you <clears throat> for giving him to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Illumine our lives so we may see in death the gate to eternal life, that we may continue our course on earth in confidence until by your call, we are reunited with those who have gone before us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'll just use the pulpit mic there, so I'm sure. 
The family has asked me to read the obituary, so these are their words. It is with great sadness that we announce the passing of Glenn Groff on Wednesday, February 21st, 2024, at the age of 86. He was predeceased by his loving wife of 49 years, Dolores, in December of 2007. Glenn will be lovingly remembered by his daughters, Mitzi, and her husband, Tom Brittner, and Cindy, and her husband, Brad Hebert, sons, Lance, and his wife, Jaylene, and Troy. Grandchildren, Ryan, uh, Ryan Cooney, Lindsay, Kyle, Brittany, uh, Justin, Nikki, Kayla, Kayla Isaac, uh, Carissa, Jordan, and Tyler Quinn and great-grandchildren, Zoe, Sophia, Avery, Alec, Claire, Ella, Hugh, Dirk, Harper, and Charlie. Brothers Gary, his wife Linda, and Keith, his wife Bonnie. Sister Virginia, sisters-in-law, Opal, Judy, and Alice, as well as numerous nieces, nephews, and friends. Glenn was also predeceased by his parents, Frank and Ivy, his sister Lori, uh, who's married to Marvin, brother Gerald, sisters-in-law Irene, who was married to Jack, Martha, who was married to Alfred, Marion, who was married to Philip, and Erna, who was married to Walter, as well as brothers-in-law Herbert, uh, Dennis, Alvin, and Ron. Glenn was born to Frank and Ivy Groff on September 2nd, 1937. He was part of a large family and grew up on a farm near Springside, Saskatchewan. Glenn's first career was to join the Air Force as a radar control operator in eastern Canada. Glenn was drawn back to Regina to be with his future wife Dolores. He tried a few occupations before he found his passion for sales. Glenn became a well-known Regina salesman at many businesses, including Wokel, Co-op, and The Bay, to mention a few. He received numerous awards and thanks from customers who would always come back to see him and to purchase again. Glenn loved vacationing with the family and took many holidays to the lake, camping, and trips to BC to visit his brothers and their families. Annually, Glenn would take his family to the Grand View Eldora Beach to, uh, to vacation with Opal, Ron, and family. As Glenn and Dolores got older, they went on several hot vacations with their special friends, Wally and Dell, Ray and Shirley. After his wife Dolores passed, had passed, uh, Glenn continued with the family traditions. He was very involved with all of his children, as well as attending many of the grandchildren's activities. Glenn loved to golf, play a game of cards or crib, and would frequent the casino. He also loved to buy many lottery tickets and scratch and win cards. And he was lucky with his tickets. Dad also liked to watch sports on TV, especially the Toronto Maple Leafs and curling. Most often you would see him sitting in his special chair reading the books he loved. Troy moved in to support and help Dad as he got older. He was blessed with a loving family who made it possible for him to stay in his home on Clark Street. We are grateful for the many wonderful memories full of laughter and love with friends and family. Now I'd like to call on Brad and Justin Hebert who are going to bring some reflections and memories. Okay, 
Well, good afternoon. On behalf of the entire family, we'd like to thank you all for coming and sharing this celebration of life for Glenn today. I am Brad Hebert, son-in-law of Glenn. And my name's Justin Hebert. I'm one of Glenn's grandsons. Uh, most of you probably don't know, but my middle name's actually Glenn. I was named after my grandpa and uh, couldn't be more proud to share his name. So together, uh, we've been asked to share some memories and stories of Glenn, as told by some of his children and grandchildren. We know that many of you here today will have your own personal memories of Glenn, but I suspect many of you will be able to relate and enjoy some of the stories today as well. So we reached out to Mitzi, Cindy, Lance and Troy, and all seven grandchildren to gather everyone's memories and stories. As expected, we did receive some common themes that resonated with everyone. So let's get started. Grandpa was a loving father and grandfather who loved sharing the activities of his kids and grandchildren. Uncle Lance and Uncle Troy recall Grandpa driving them to all of their sporting events, whether it be hockey or baseball, regardless of the time of day. Usually early, early, very early, if it was the hockey practices at the RCMP rink close to their house. Grandpa was not only a driver, but I remember the stories of Uncle Tom and Dad co-coaching a season under Grandpa's head coaching position of Troy's baseball team. I have a feeling that Grandpa asked my dad and Uncle Tom to be co-coaches to test their worthiness to marry his daughters. Poor Troy probably had a few tough practices with those three yelling at him and his friends. Grandpa continued his love for sports by becoming his grandkids' favorite cheerleader and supporter. He came to cheer on all of our sporting pursuits and seemed to never miss a game, whether it was Ryan's soccer, football, Lindsay's baseball, Kyle's hockey and curling, my hockey and baseball, Kayla's volleyball, Carissa's gymnastics, or Tyler's hockey. We could always count on him being up in the stands no matter the sport or the location, and we always knew that he would be up there coming down uh, with a Powerade waiting to give us at the end of the game. In his later years, after all of us grandkids were finished playing sports, uh, Lance took Grandpa to Phoenix, where he could continue his love of watching sports uh, live sports by catching a few NHL hockey games. As they were within driving distance to one of the seven wonders of the world, Lance thought it would be a great opportunity to check out the Grand Canyon too. After renting a red convertible, the two of them drove three hours to see it. Upon arriving, Grandpa walked over to the viewing point. He took a quick look and said, it's nice, let's go back. And they returned to Phoenix to watch some more hockey. <laughs> Glenn was a man of many skills. However, being a handyman was not necessarily one of them. This, although, did not stop him from trying to help out anyone that asked. Mitzi recalls the time Glenn, Glenn came out to their house in White City and helped her lacquer their winding railing going up the staircase, which no one really wanted to do. But Glenn tackled the job, the project, without any complaints and did a great job. Lance remembers that Glenn was always there to help them move, which happened many times over the years. Auntie Jay's desire to constantly relocate didn't phase Glenn's willingness to help out on every occasion. It turned out with this family, Glenn could have started his own moving company and made money given the amount of moves that have happened over the years. Cindy and Troy also recall that Glenn was always lending a helping hand with Dolores when cleaning was the number one task at hand. And with Dolores, that was more often than not. Grandpa loved to eat. There were not too many things on the menu that Grandpa would not eat. He loved his bread and butter though, with just about anything. And when I say that it was more butter than bread, he was a real artist when it comes to buttering his bread. He had a handful of restaurants that were his favorites. Smitty's, which he never strayed from the breakfast special. Two eggs over easy, sausage well done. Hash browns with brown toast. Applebee's and Luigi's to name a few. And Grandpa loved his sweets and treats. His peppermints were a staple his entire life. Everyone always loved sneaking peppermints from the dish on the coffee table at Grandpa's house. He also always had a pocket full of mints that he was willing to share. 
However, that mint always came with a handful of lint. <laughs> All you could do is say thanks and throw the handful of mint and lint in your mouth and smile. I also remember in the earlier years that sometimes Grandpa smelled a little bit off. While he tried his best to hide it, Grandpa loved smoking cigarettes. He was also very cheap and would only take two, three puffs, then dab out a cigarette, return it into his pack, and put it in his pocket for later. This routine didn't exactly help his cause when it came to hiding the secret from the family, as he always smelled a little bit like smoke. My mom even said in his final days, uh, he was asking her for the odd smoke laid up in the hospital bed. Well, when it came to Glenn's career, being a salesman was his calling in life. Glenn started out working as a traveling salesman with Marshalls in Alberta, then he came back to Saskatchewan to work at the Bethune Co-op, Woco in the Southland Mall, the Co-op in Regina, the Bay, and his final destination, the Rosemont Hardware on 4th Avenue. Glenn was the ultimate salesperson and could pretty much sell anything to anyone given the chance. As the old saying goes, he could have sold snow to an Eskimo. This is where I share a bit of a unique perspective as I got to experience Glenn the salesman firsthand as his employee. This is where his nickname Chiefy for me came into existence. I called him that for the rest of his life. When I first got out of school, he had just got the manager's job running the new co-op department store on Rochdale Boulevard. <clears throat> and he offered me a job. He ran several departments there, was responsible for sales and furniture, appliances, TVs and electronics, and the carpet department. So needless to say, I had a front row seat to watch Glenn in action. He was good at sales and he loved it. I can tell you that time and time again, an unsuspecting couple would come into the department store and would be heading back to the hardware department in the back of the store to buy something like a furnace filter. However, when their path on the way took them through the furniture department, Glenn would be waiting and would seize the opportunity to sell them the couch and chair of their dreams and something they simply could not live without. They ultimately would leave the store with a new sofa and chair and no furnace filter. Another thing I always remembered about Glenn, and maybe some of you noticed as well if you ever came into the store to visit him, he always showed up for work looking dapper in a suit and tie. However, not long into the day, he would soon have his shirt pocket stuffed with papers, pens, business cards, napkins, you name it. And every sales order he wrote up that day would get folded and added to the pocket. Some days I'm not sure how the pocket on his shirt did not explode. And of course, somewhere in that maze of paper, he always strategically had a handful of toothpicks, which was critical to the success of the day. Us grandkids have many fond memories of when we were younger with Grandpa. We always loved Grandpa's Christmas parties at the Bay. Grandpa was very proud to show off his grandkids, and we were all ecstatic to see Santa and get her own present. We all will be forever grateful that Grandpa was able to attend all of our weddings and other special events that meant a lot to us. The pictures of these events with Grandpa will always be there for us to cherish. Grandpa loved the outdoors and working in his garden. If it was remotely hot out, he usually had his shirt off, and by the end of every summer, his skin looked more like an old leather ball glove than anything else. He loved the heat. He took pride in his garden and enjoyed giving away most of his vegetables to his family. This love for his yard and garden sure rubbed off on his kids. He also loved to just sit outside in the sun with a good book. Grandpa was an avid reader, and if he wasn't working or watching sports, you'd find him with a book. So Mitzi, Cindy, Lance, and Troy all have very fond memories of their dad during the many special holidays traveling as a family. There were camping weekend trips with Wally Dell, Ray, and Shirley, many summer retreats to Granville, El Eldora Beach with Uncle Ron and Auntie Opal, and cousins Jason and Shauna, and all the trips out to B BC to visit his brother Keith and Bonnie and their family, as well as brother Gary and Linda and their family. Since driving without a seatbelt was a thing to do back then, it seemed Mitzi, Cindy, Lance, and Troy all had to fight to see who, who got to lie down on the floor on the, of the back seat. I guess that was a coveted spot in the car. 
Also over the years, we all grew a bit skeptical of Glenn's driving through the mountains, as he was, he was the only person we knew that drove with one foot on the brake and one foot on the gas pedal. We glad he never forgot which foot to use going down Three Valley Gap. And of course, all the children still remember the famed trip to the water slide park in BC on one hot sunny afternoon. As the story goes, Glenn decided to join in the kids' fun and go down the slide himself. Well, being a bit cautious, uh, he was going fairly slowly when a kid came up quickly from behind and ran into him. In a bit of a panic, he reached up to grab the water slide itself and proceeded to cut his hand pretty badly. A trip to the hospital for stitches and a finger cast ended the fun at the water park that day. All of us grandkids will never forget all the special family gatherings and family meals we had with grandma and grandpa. Even after grandma passed away, grandpa sh made sure to keep these very important gatherings going. He worked hard to keep traditions alive, like decorating at Christmas the way grandma used to, and trying to attend all the family functions like birthdays and special celebrations that he could. It was during those gatherings that we all learned the love of the game of crib, along with other card and board games with Grandpa. Well, we were all grateful that Troy was able to live with and care for Glenn and allow him to spend his last years in the house he loved. Glenn was a pretty quiet man who worked hard and never complained about anything. He will be remembered for his infectious smile and laugh and for the love of his family. Grandpa, us grandkids, we'll be saving you a seat in the stands knowing you will be there cheering your great grandkids on. Rest easy knowing we'll carry on the tradition of supporting our families the way you did. So Glenn, you are forever in our hearts. We take comfort knowing you're back by Dolores' side. We love you and miss you both. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Brad and Justin. I'd like to share with you now some scriptures and portions of these were uh, read uh, by myself uh, to Glenn uh, shortly before he uh, passed away. First is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And then a reading from the Gospel of John. This is from the 14th chapter. Jesus is speaking. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. And now I'm going to call on Mitzi, who's going to read a poem for us. Behold the body, born of dust, how perfect it has become. 
why should you fear its end? When were you ever made less by dying? When you pass beyond this human form, no doubt you will become an angel and soar through the heavens. But don't stop there. Even heavenly bodies grow old. Pass again from the heavenly realm and plunge into the ocean of consciousness. Let the drop of water that is you become a hundred mighty seas. But do not think that the drop alone becomes the ocean. The ocean too becomes the drop. By Rumi. Thank you, Mitzi. Please pray with me. Gracious God, as I share a few words with those gathered here today and those who are watching online, may the words I share bring peace and comfort that comes from you. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. It was, uh, I think, a day or two after uh, Glenn had passed away and I was visiting with a parishioner and, uh, and I happened to men mention that, that, that someone had passed away from the congregation and this person said, oh, well, who was that? And I said, well, Glenn Groff. And she said without a moment's hesitation, oh, I know him. I bought my freezer from him. <laughs> and then I bought my dryer from him and they both still work, she said. And, and that was quite a while ago. She indicated the freezer, I think, was over 30 years old. So <laughs> they don't build them like that anymore, eh? I was thinking about that and, uh, and some of the comments that, that she made about her experiences with Glenn as a salesman. I mean, a salesman, you know, ultimate job is to sell, right? But my understanding is the best salespeople are the ones who identify the need in the people who are there and then meet that need with, with the products available, right? So they, they figure out very quickly, oh, this is what this person or this family needs, and, uh, and then they direct them towards that and help them find uh, something appropriate. And, uh, and so you, you look to meet the needs of the people uh, and, and, and identify that, which means that you need to be aware of what other people is you know what's going on in their life what's happening and what their needs might be so you have to be attentive to the needs of others i was thinking of that when i was reflecting on uh, these scripture readings the first uh, psalm 23 very famously you know talks about the shepherd who looks to the needs of the sheep who is attentive to the needs of the sheep isn't just staring off into space while they're out there um, you know in the meadow or whatever but they're constantly being aware of what are, what are the sheep doing, what do they need, and how can I get that for them? How can I direct them towards green pastures beside quiet waters? My understanding of the phrase about quiet waters, is, my understanding is, and I'm not a shepherd and not even a farmer, but my understanding is that sheep will not drink from water that's flowing. It needs to be still, like a, a pool or something like that. And so you need to find a place where the sheep will go, oh, I can drink from that. So that's why they have to be led beside quiet waters. And then a little later in the psalm, it talks, kind of shifts gears, and it moves beyond the image of a shepherd now to someone who is preparing a banquet. And they're preparing a banquet, a table, and they're doing that even in the presence of enemies. So even though there's difficulties surrounding them, there's threats and fear, this person is still attending to the needs of the, uh, the, the other people. They're watching and seeing what's needed and then meeting that. So they're preparing a table, they're anointing uh, heads with oil and uh, so forth. And then the, the psalm famously ends, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So what we understand by the end of the psalm is it is the Lord who is in one sense we could say the ultimate salesman the one who is looking to our needs seeking to 
meet those needs and is doing whatever is required to direct us to where we can find uh, what we truly need. Now there's, there's the problem, is that we don't always understand what we truly need. But it's, a, it's at times like this that we begin to recognize what's actually valuable in life. So as we listened to the memories about Glenn's life, what became apparent is friends, caring for your family, uh, these were some of the most important things, right? Not acquisition of stuff or whatever. I mean, the fact that Glenn liked to garden, but then gave most of the produce away, right? Again, that's this idea of attending to the needs of others. And that's what we remember, right? We remember those ways that the people we have loved, you know, did things for us that made us feel welcome, made us feel special, made us feel loved. And that's ultimately what we're striving for. So in the passage from John, uh, the, the whole chapter, John 14, has a lot of beautiful imagery in it. And, uh, and uh, it would be worth your while to read the whole chapter, but these verses really speak of preparing, of identifying what's needed and then preparing that. So Jesus says, in my Father's house are many dwelling places, and if it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? In other words, Jesus has recognized the need for uh, a place where we can live in eternity with those whom we love, and that, that he has gone ahead of us to prepare that place for us. He's identified our need, and then he's addressed it. Or I could say he is addressing it, like it's an ongoing process. And Glenn now knows the fullness of that. He knows the fullness of what it means to gather again with those loved ones who have gone before us. We can only imagine what that would be like. Um, but we can trust the words of Scripture which promise that this is a reality that's waiting for all of us beyond death's door. So that's how come Jesus can end his uh, speech that he gives in John 14 with these words. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. In other words, the peace that Jesus gives is not the kind of peace that we so often deal with in the world. Because the kind of peace we deal with in the world is often just simply the absence of conflict. But that's not true peace that settles deep in our hearts. So Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. What's important to note about these words is that Jesus is speaking these words shortly before his own death. He recognizes that there is going to come a time very shortly when his disciples will no longer see, them, see him with their own eyes. But he's trying to promise them that what is, uh, what, the, what is about to unfold is not the end of the story. And likewise, I would say, even though today we're saying goodbye in a formal way to Glenn, this is not the end of Glenn's story. But it's being written in a place that we cannot uh, see it yet. It's like, uh, it's like a sequel to a book. I don't know if you've ever been reading a book and it's been a great book and then you get to the last page and you realize, oh, there's a sequel and I don't have the sequel. Has that ever happened to you? And then like you're frustrated and then you're trying to find the sequel, you know, you check the library, you check the, you know, well now we got Amazon so it's pretty easy to find sequels. But I, I had this exact example the other day. I was like reading a book. I was like, oh, I'm really enjoying this. And it's like, I think I bought that whole series. And then I went looking for the rest of the books in the series. There's five books in the series. To discover the book number four I never had. So now I had to track down book number four. I don't know if Glenn wrote, read those kind of books, that multi-volume books. Do you know if he read those kind of books? You don't think so? Not so much. All right. Well, I still think the uh, illustration works, so we'll just go with it, okay? <laughs> so, uh, so we've gotten to the end of the first book for Glenn, right? But it's not, it's, there's a sequel. And we may have to wait to see how the sequel unfolds, right? But Glenn is already writing it. So that's what we can think about uh, as we uh, say goodbye to Glenn today and may those thoughts bring us peace and comfort 
even in this time of grief. Amen. So the family also wanted me to read a poem that many of you have heard before. It's uh, called Footprints, and it goes like this. One night I dreamed I was walking along the beach with the Lord. Many scenes from my life flashed across the sky. In each scene, I noticed footprints in the sand. Sometimes there were two sets of footprints. Other times, there was only one. This bothered me because I noticed that during the low periods of my life, when I was suffering from anguish, sorrow, or defeat, I could only see one set of footprints. So I said to the Lord, you promised me, Lord, that if I followed you, you would walk with me always. But I have noticed that during the most trying periods of my life, there has only been one set of footprints in the sand. Why, when I needed you the most, have you not been there for me? The Lord replied, The years when you have seen only one set of footprints, my child, is when I carried you. May you know that God carries you today. We turn now to a time of prayer. And uh, each, after each petition in the prayer, I'll say the phrase, Lord in your mercy, and would invite you to respond, hear our prayer. And this uh, section of prayers will conclude with the Lord's prayer. And again, I'll invite you to join me in that. So let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus, fullness of compassion, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress, draw near to us who mourn for Glenn, and dry the tears of those who weep. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, man of sorrows, you wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, firstborn of the new creation, you raised the dead. Give to our brother life eternal. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus, friend of sinners, you promised paradise to the repentant thief. Bring Glenn to the joys of heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, wellspring of life, you washed our brother in baptism and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Give him communion with all your saints. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus, bread of life, you nourish Glenn at your table on earth. Welcome him at your table in the realm of heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus, bright morning star, comfort us in our sorrows at the death of Glenn Groff. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Lord, in your mercy. Jesus, Savior of unending grace, we give you thanks because by your death you destroyed the power of death and by your resurrection opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because you live, we shall live also and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come shall be able to separate us from your love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us commend Glenn to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Into your hands, holy God, we commend our brother, Glenn Groff. In this life, through the waters of baptism, you embraced him with your tender love. Now bid him to enter eternal rest. 
Welcome him into your paradise where there will be no more sorrow, no weeping or pain, but where he will enjoy the fullness of peace and joy in your presence forever and ever. Amen. During our uh, next hymn, Amazing Grace, I think you might like to stand. So, Amazing Grace, it's hymn number 779. We'll sing verses 1, 3, and 5. So now I will direct your attention uh, to the screen where there will be a video tribute to play.
All of you are invited to a time of fellowship upstairs in our education uh, auditorium. We do have a fel uh, elevator for those of you who find stairs uh, difficult. It's just off to the uh, south there. When you head upstairs, please take a seat at a table right away. There will be coffee and water on each table right now. Um, and members of the serving group will indicate when it's your table's turn to go up to the food line. In order for the uh, servers to begin serving coffee and food right away, I would like to offer a table grace now before we proceed upstairs. Let us pray. Gracious God, we ask that you bless our time of fellowship together. We give you thanks for the food we're about to receive and for those who have prepared it. May these refreshments strengthen our bodies that we might be a comfort for one another. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand for the blessing. May Christ the Good Shepherd enfold you with love, fill you with peace, and lead you in hope to the end of your days. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. In the name of Christ, let us go forth in peace.